Welcome to this tutorial on manipulating images in Superstar. I've got the S5 sequencer already open using the Rocky Murray Gentleman song, and I'm using the 16CCR RGB tree preview. So I'm going to uh, get started by selecting, uh, changing my select to select the whole row, and I'm going to create a Superstar effect and click on this uh, ribbons and RGB star row, and this will open up the Superstar sequencer. So to manipulate images, we need to open the image setup dialog box, which we open by clicking on this little pencil button here, um, or you can go to tools and select images. So to manipulate an image, we need to draw an image. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that little white dot, and I'm going to draw a rainbow snowflake that we're going to manipulate. So I'll start with red, and then as I click, it'll cycle through the rainbow. won't be perfect, but that's not the point. So here, um, I'm just going to make this last one pink. There we go. There's my lovely snowflake. So now I'm just going to name my image Snow, whoops, Snowflake, uh, and then add it. And I'm going to add 10 of these snowflakes so we can do um, uh, various things with them. Uh, so to start, I'm going to do, I'm going to edit all of them at once, um, so I can just click on that one, and then hold shift and click, um, or you can just click and drag, and it will highlight them all, um, and then I'll click on manipulate selected images, and yes, I'm going to edit 10 of them at a time. Um, so we can always do this uh, rotation here, um, however many times you want, um, or you can flip it left to right, or flip it up and down, um, and then you could click apply and that will um, change all of them to be flipped the same way um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this rotation angle um, so you can just enter in any angle that you want um, so I'll do 180 which you realize you know is the same as doing up and down but this way when I say apply um, it flips it and if I do prorated I could do apply and then it would cha make the same change for all the snowflakes um, but prorated will slowly make that change um, equally among all of the images. So you can see here it shows us it starts out at zero degrees where it's the original image. Um, but you can see it, um, it, it changes a little bit as it's rotating um, because it looks better while it's rotating. So then it slowly um, makes that change at 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60, 80, and slowly flips it around until we're all the way to 180. So this way, you can um, easily add effects here, um, some actions. So I'm going to change this to be 0, 0 because we don't want it to move. Um, and I'll just select um, some of those boxes there and say Add Plus, um, starting at that 0. Oops, guys, make sure that's at 0. And then I'll just say Add, and I'll add my 10 actions um, using my snowflakes. And now we can see it as it slowly rotates to be upside down. So let's take a look at that. So there we go. So now we've got it spinning. Um, so let's go and do a couple more things to our snowflake. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight all those and manipulate. And um, this time I'm going to adjust the brightness. Um, so I'm going to bring it down to say 10% brightness and say apply so that makes it essentially so you can't see it um, and I'll do the same thing I'll prorate it so then uh, it starts at 100% and then it slowly will get uh, will slowly fade away until it's essentially gone right and since I already added these images to the actions I don't have to change the action at all so now we can just look at it and watch it slowly fade away <laughs> Here we go. So now let's do something else. I'm going to highlight all of them. Say manipulate. Um, you can also use this uh, move and scale. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it first. So I'll just click on that. Um, and this way you can make it bigger or smaller, um, either left to right or up and down or both. Um, Say so I want to make it a little smaller, so I'll make it like 
eighty percent um, left and right and eighty percent up and down so not a ton but just a little bit smaller and then I can do the same thing and say prorate uh, and it shows me um, the width and height how much it's getting bigger and smaller as it goes um, so now let's watch it as it gets smaller as it's disappearing as it's uh, spinning around there we go so it's a little subtle but you can see it getting smaller depending on your image um, you know it'd look better as it gets smaller but the, it's already kind of small to begin with um, so now let's do the movement so I'll highlight all those again and I'll click on uh, select move so I'm gonna move this snowflake from the top left corner to the bottom right corner so as it's disappearing as it's spinning as it's fading away um, and as it's getting a little smaller it's going to also move down to the corner um, so I can just move it so that it's all the way down here whoops there we go and again I could say apply and then it would move them all down here but I'm gonna prorate it again um, and depending on how much space there is I've already done a lot of changes so it's hard to fit on there but you can see it adds um, its position on there as it's moving down um, if there's space for it um, so let's take a look at that there we go so it's falling and spinning as it's disappearing uh, the final thing I want to show you um, I'll bring it back up to here is this um, the truncating so we've got this truncate image RGB values here um, there's also trunk all which will truncate all of the images which in this case um, I don't have that many um, so what the truncating does is it will make it it changes your your colors so that all your colors are rounded to the nearest 10 so if I click right there you can see the reds at 50 the greens at 25 blues at 30 um, or if I go to one that's fading a little more we can get a little more variety so if I hold shift and click like right there you see we've got red at 11 green 45 blue 24 so the truncate would round this to 10 green up to 50 and blue down to 20 um, and what that does is it makes it run more efficiently on your lights um, just by you know cutting down the number of colors it has to process um, so let's go ahead and um, if I selected whoops, if I selected all of these and said truncate image RGB values and say apply obviously that's not something to prorate so it's grayed out and say apply now say when I'm down here and I shift and click we've got 50 30 60 10, 50, 20, like we had before, you know, and all of them are rounded to the nearest 10. Um, so you'll find that that will help a lot. Um, and visually, uh, you can't, it doesn't make that much of a difference because the colors are still close enough, but it will make it run much smoother. So again, if you have problems with lag when you're running images on your actual lights, then you can use this truncate um, to help them display smoothly without lag. Um, lag is usually a problem you only have with bigger images, so images such as this snowflake um, is probably not going to lag, um, but it can be very helpful on those bigger images. Um, and one quick thing I didn't mention before, um, when you're doing um, moving or scaling, it will scale the image from the top left corner. So if I had um, moved it first and the image was like down here, um, the program is going to think that your image is that big right it measures it from this top left corner um, so if you do want to scale and move make sure you scale it first um, and then do the moving so that the scaling um, doesn't get thrown off um, so now that we've truncated it let's just look at it one more time There we go, and it looks the same to me, um, but now we'll run more efficiently on your lights. So I'll go ahead and close this and let that load back into our um, sequencer. Okay, so now in here, let's take a look at um, what that looks like. There you go, easy as that. That's all I have for you today. I thank you for your time, and I hope you have a superb day.